Hello there, kitties. Long time no see. I'm Kerry, the vacuum tube witch. And today, I'm happy to announce that I finally did it. <laughs> the Sohar DRX85, uh, the one that you see on my bench. Finally, I reverse engineered it. Got a bunch of schematics for this device. <laughs> All hands drawn. With love. Then the reverse engineering is complete. And it was a mighty complicated device to, to reverse engineer. Tracking all those traces on uh, on uh, two PCBs, tracking the signal, also uh, poking around with a scope to see what kind of signal um, I've got in different points. It uh, let me learn about the inner workings of um, the analog to digital converters, to the, the digital to analog converters. Also the the memory addressing circuits and uh, that's a mighty interesting device. Uh, we're gonna take a deep dive and see what happens there. One moment please, let me go over to the bench. And we are now at the bench and first thing I'd like to share, I made a short about it but but this is worth mentioning that uh, I at some point I used a flashlight to shine light through the, the PCB to view the traces uh, on the bottom side and then I just came up with an idea why not use a light box <laughs> and uh, that's what you'll see let me zoom on in like uh, I can just shine some light uh, through the PCB It, uh, it will work with uh, old school PCBs like uh, single layer or, or double layer but uh, with no <coughs> intermediate layers inside and of course it won't uh, show us uh, the, the traces that are covered uh, by, um, by parts mainly the integrated circuits uh, because sometimes uh, there's a lot uh, happening underneath the IC but uh, generally speaking it uh, it helps a lot with uh, with tracing the signal from one part uh, to another and uh, it was uh, it was mighty helpful to get job done. Of course, uh, others like uh, like Big Clive, for example, they uh, photographed the whole PCB from both sides, and uh, then uh, in post production they. Uh, they will uh, flip the image uh, and uh, either print it or or even uh, superpose uh, those uh, images to to have one with uh, with connections and parts visible but uh, i didn't really want to take a photo and print it and uh, and do some uh, graphical program uh, 
shenanigans. <laughs> I just uh, I just wanted to work on uh, on the board, not uh, not the photo, because uh, every now and then uh, you just have to poke around with uh, with the meter. Check the voltages, check the continuity, and uh, you can't uh, do it on an image. <laughs> Although uh, having a photograph of the printed circuit board uh, helps uh, quite a lot uh, if you need to mark the voltages or signals or the or the nets, uh, like uh, like an. Uh, PCB design programs. Uh, you've got uh, you've got different uh, different netlists, uh, and and Clive uh, marks them with uh, with different uh, colors, like uh, on the soldering pads. He mostly does um, the surface mount stuff. I mostly do the vintage uh, single layered uh, single layered uh, through hole technology and uh, this is what it's used this is uh, what it's useful when uh, when doing such uh, kinds of projects let me grab some more PCBs that uh, could be a good candidate for reverse engineering this way. One moment, please. So now the sucker goes off and it will it will come back pretty soon. And a, a display module. Uh, all those birds, uh, I salvaged them uh, from uh, some devices that I, that I disassembled. But uh, as you can see, the, the traces uh, are pretty clearly visible. And uh, if I've got a, a double layered uh, PCB, then then the bottom layer tends to be a little bit uh, a little bit blurry. But uh, I can tell one from another, though sometimes it gets a little bit discombobulated. This is a uh, example of a big uh, double layered part. Anyway, ah, and uh, I also <laughs> didn't have a 24 volt uh, power supply, so I did the dangerous stuff. <laughs> But if you expected uh, anything going electro boom, other than the, other than the full bird tractifier made of discrete diodes here, <laughs> you would uh, you would get none. <laughs> so back to the sohar. Let's start with the block diagram and let's zoom on in to, to see how this device uh, actually functions. Let's take a look at the rear panel. We've got the instrument input, the microphone input. We've got the universal input, which has uh, its uh, peculiarity. Apart from um, the level being adjustable here, we can uh, choose whether the dry signal 
is to be mixed uh, together with um, with the delay the signal and uh, available on the output we can't uh, we can't choose between the mixed or delayed signal if we use the microphone and uh, instrument inputs those will always be mixed with the dry signal and on the front panel we've got the microphone and instrument uh, input uh, level tone controls then we've got the high pass low pass uh, filter the repeat controls and uh, also the echo or reverb uh, selection switch we've got uh, delay time adjustment uh, this is the feedback control that uh, allows us to drive a certain portion of uh, of the delayed signal back to the delay units input to allow us to make some more repetitions then the delay time controls both the, the multiplier that uh, it has something like uh, you see on an oscilloscope the extreme position is the, the calibrated uh, position and uh, it uh, it will click in into place uh, and uh, be marked with a shining uh, led let's uh, let's switch this thing on and uh, and see turning on every one of those switches uh, it also has an additional section that uh, turns on uh, the LED. A little bit superfluous, <laughs> but uh, certainly attractive in those times. It was 1986. Then we've got the delay time control and the post effect uh, signal volume control and tone controls and the, the bypass switch it's not the true bypass you are used to seeing on uh, effect pedals it just uh, shorts the output of uh, of the delay to ground though it will still let uh, the dry signal through unless you are using the universal input and uh, decide to use only the delayed signal then uh, then the unit will be muted altogether if uh, if those uh, two switches are pressed so let's take a look at um, the block diagram and see what goes where so we've got the microphone and instrument uh, input they are actually just there one of them is 10 decibels uh, lower than the other one so uh, this uh, this attenuator it's uh, pretty clever whereas uh, here we've got one since uh, any of those inputs uh, is shorted to ground when uh, the, the plug is not uh, in the input jack it will form a uh, voltage divider together with a low pass uh, filter for the microphone it would be 
15 to 37 and for the instrument it would be 37 to 15 kilo ohms and that's where the difference in uh, input sensitivity comes from then we've got a two transistor amplifier circuit the input uh, level control the active uh, back sandal type uh, tone controls with a single transistor amplifying stage uh, on the output then the mute switch uh, is realized by by two normally closed uh, contacts wired uh, in series between uh, the output of this uh, amplifier and the ground so it just uh, shorts uh, it shorts uh, this amplifier to the ground and here we've got uh, two summing nodes one of the, them uh, between the universal inputs uh, amplifier the microphone and uh, instrument uh, input uh, amplifier and also the feedback signal from the delay units uh, output uh, from the first uh, digital to analog converter and uh, the output of this uh, amplifier is fed into the level meter and the analog to digital converter and uh, this uh, universal input also has this feature of uh, mixed or delay then the switch basically cuts off the dry signal from uh, from the universal input it does not cut the dry signal from the instrument uh, or microphone uh, input it will be fed into the summing node and the output amplifier no matter what that's why uh, this uh, pesky little bugger works only in the universal uh, input uh, configuration it puzzled me quite a bit before i reverse engineered it but it's uh, no more it's no more a uh, mystery to me we'll take care of the whole uh, digital delay uh, circuitry in uh, one of the next videos because it deserves uh, a separate part now we'll just do the the analog signal processing parts uh, so uh, here we've got uh, a uh, a circuitry that uh, mixes uh, three digital to analog converters two of them the the ones that I marked uh, V3 and V4 located here they are in action only in the reverb mode they are put out of action in the echo mode and uh, just a quick uh, look at the DIC schematic The, the disabling of those uh, DACs is done by uh, shorting this uh, end of, uh, of the diode 
to negative uh, 12 volt supply otherwise uh, it will be left floating and uh, and the control that goes to the amplifier bias in the DAC will be active so back to the output section it starts uh, after the the mixer part it's uh, it's the effect volume uh, potentiometer that feeds into the cell and key type uh, active low pass filter then uh, the more classic uh, backs and all kind of uh, tone controls with a uh, 741 as a uh, operational amplifier with uh, with feedback going back to the tone controls then we've got uh, another cell and key type uh, active filter and a passive low pass filter another another uh, filter uh, or DC separation uh, circuitry and the bypass switch I mentioned that it's not true bypass <laughs> it's false bypass <laughs> it uh, also uh, just uh, just uh, mutes the the signal to ground not too remarkable but it works and then we've got a single operational amplifier this summing node mixes the the dry signal with uh, with the wet signal so here we've got the dry signal here we've got the wet signal and the gain control allows us to set the output level it's this potentiometer and finally the output jack oh wait was it this one or was it this one one more one please it's this one because this is the bypass uh, for the foot switch <laughs> still carries the signal and uh, come to think of it you could misuse the bypass uh, bypass jack looking at the schematic you could just misuse uh, the bypass jack as the wet signal output <laughs> Who would have thought? Now this is the input preamplifier. This is the output preamplifier. So uh, either you could uh, misuse um, it as a pretty high impedance uh, wet signal output, or you could misuse it uh, as an uh, additional input for mixing some uh, some more signal into the output but uh, it won't go back uh, to the delay unit because uh, the feedback signal it's only taken uh, from the first uh, DIC And the sheer amount of work uh, that went into creating those schematics <laughs> and uh, figuring out uh, the, the whole device <laughs> it took me something like two weeks to reverse engineer this is the analog to the digital converter 
and the digital to analog converter. And this is uh, also an interesting part. Let's uh, let's put those schematics aside. Focus on the one that I'm telling you about. So, this is the delay time uh, selection circuit. It uses uh, two integrated circuits that were originally meant uh, for radio and uh, TV receivers for selecting the the voltage uh, controlled uh, the voltage uh, for the voltage controlled uh, tuning heads and uh, you could gang uh, a few of those um, ICs for as many channels uh, as you wanted to be able to program a similar circuit is found in the Radmore 5102 stereo receiver but uh, but when I uh, took a look at the schematic for that one it was definitely not this IC then I did some uh, googling, some uh, some research, uh, some cross-referencing, the pinout with uh, with the schematic that I uh, drew, some notes that I uh, took when uh, reverse engineering this thing, and I found the designation of the IC and how it works. Basically, this IC, whenever you short the control input to ground through a large resistance those serial resistors they are one mag it will activate uh, some uh, some trigger in it shorting the the signal line to ground and it was uh, meant for for uh, lamps of uh, of any kind, uh, be it neon, or or light bulb, uh, or LED, even Nixie tubes. The indication uh, output will be shorted, and then there's some more circuitry in this IC that uh, that uh, selects. Uh, the control voltage um, between uh, one of uh, one of four inputs on uh, on the IC, but it is not used here. What is also used is uh, a input output line that uh, acts as uh, the resetting line and the changing uh, signal output it will change the voltage here normally it will be 2 point something volt and uh, when the sensor is being activated the voltage here will rise to something like uh, three and a half or 4 volts then the change will be fed into this circuit which uh, activates the signal killer on uh, all the digital to analog converters this will serve uh, the purpose of uh, not feeding uh, any signal from uh, the delay unit when the when the time is being changed for the purpose of uh, avoiding an ugly glitch 
it uh, it just uh, mutes uh, everything on the DAC level. So uh, this will be this will be this circuit. This will be this circuit, and the the outputs, uh, the control outputs, will be pretty interesting too. Because uh, whenever the the time is activated, its corresponding indication line uh, is uh, pulled low. Those are LEDs right uh, above those uh, touch sensors. And uh, whenever an LED shines, then the current uh, flows through it into the low state. So uh, if uh, if we've got uh, a low state on on the first sensor, this will be low, and any subsequent uh, output will also be low. Then uh, if we choose the 10 millisecond uh, delay time. Then the first one will be high, out one will be high, but then the second one will be low. So even though this is high, this is low, so this will be low, and uh, any subsequent one uh, will also be low. And uh, 20, 30. It will basically enable put the put the high state uh, on more and more of uh, the outputs. The last one it just controls the LED, but it's not used. It doesn't go into any of those end gates. And uh, if uh, 640 millisecond delay is, uh, is selected, all of those uh, outputs from 1 to 7 will be high. And uh, those outputs are fed into end gates. Yeah, more and more end gates. <laughs> of uh, the memory control circuitry that uh, will put uh, more and more memory cells uh, in action allowing for holding the the, the samples of uh, the digitized uh, signals for more time, and uh, that's basically how how this thing works. I haven't uh, exactly reverse engineered uh, how the memory control works yet, but uh, this is pretty clever. And uh, here we've got the very classic linear power supply. Oh, I forgot marking the the values of the capacitors here, but we've got uh, 70, 78, uh, 12, 79, 12, and 78, uh, 0, 05 uh, linear regulators. And of course the full bridge rectifiers uh, made of discrete diodes. The unit uh, has been completely recapped. All the electrolytics and uh, and the ceramic capacitors, uh, they are gone. And uh, this is the logarithmic circuit um, with an uh, operational amplifier located here. It controls the UL1980 bar graph driver. And uh, the more voltage we've got on the input uh, compared to the reference voltage on pin number two, the more diodes uh, 
well, come on. Up to the zero dB input level. And uh, that would be it for now. The analog circuits uh, we've got. Uh, We've got uh, those circuits analyzed, but uh, we still have to analyze the digital circuits. But this will be the, the thing to do next time. Because uh, even though I did some reading on the delta modulation and delta sigma modulation, I still don't exactly understand uh, the inner workings of uh, the digital to analog and uh, analog to digital circuitry. This uh, RS trigger also uh, allows us to select between the repeated uh, delay uh, signal that's uh, our digital feed feedback. I drew it as uh, a uh, SPDT switch, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, made with NAND guides. Allows us to choose between the the feedback, so all the digital signal will be circulated and now digitized uh, input signal will be fed into the delay device that's uh, what it does in the repeat uh, position and when the repeat switch is off it will work normally passing the signal from the analog uh, to digital converter into through the gate into the first pair of uh, of D triggers and uh, those triggers change state uh, on the clock pulse from the memory board from the DIC CLK uh, output, so it happens uh, a little bit uh, after the the negative uh, write enable on the RAM uh, is uh, activated. Then when uh, when this goes positive, uh, the the input state on the D input will be transcribed to to the Q output and uh, and to the D input of the next one, but uh, it will wait uh, until the next uh, clock uh, pulse uh, happens to be transcribed from uh, from here to to there. And uh, whenever the the state on uh, on the input and the state of the output, that is the previous state, uh, are different, one of them is zero, the other is one, or one of them is one, the other is zero. The control circuitry of uh, of this uh, of this uh, operational transconductance amplifier will will activate it uh, and uh, let the signal out here change uh, change the voltage then change the polarity. That will go to this capacitor that uh, acts as a uh, integrating circuit, and uh, here on the output uh, we've got uh, 
pretty much recombobulated uh, analog signal. When I took a look at it uh, with the scope, um, here I got the sine wave uh, resembling the input signal. When I uh, when I fed the unit with uh, some uh, one kilohertz uh, signal from the generator, and uh, and here on the inverting input of uh, the operational transconductance uh, amplifier, I had a uh, a train of bits. Those were pretty fast, so uh, this. Um, this D trigger uh, de detects the change of state. When the state doesn't change, uh, it will uh, stay negative. Uh, the in the output will uh, stay negative. And uh, and here those pulses are being integrated. This is uh, the bias adjustment uh, for DC balance so that uh, the comparator inputs uh, don't have uh, any DC voltage difference. So we adjust it so that uh, we have uh, zero millivolts uh, between the comparator inputs. So uh, that would be the analog to digital converter which uh, in fact uh, also features one digital to analog converters <laughs> like uh, like the delta or delta sigma dacs um, they have that uh, that kind of uh, of circuit uh, where there's a uh, comparator and uh, and the quantifier and uh, and then the uh, DAC and integrator feeding the other input of uh, of the comparator so uh, so this would be the other way uh, the, the digital to analog again the other the other trigger it uh, detects the difference that drives the circuitry. The DICs can be blocked, like I said, and uh, there's some uh, adjustment uh, here that I don't exactly know what it's supposed to do. It certainly sets the bias point of uh, the operational transconductance uh, amplifier but uh, I don't know um, how the bias sh how the bias should be adjusted, so I didn't touch those potentiometers. Never touch a potentiometer if you don't understand what it does. And here we've got um, a integrator circuit again, and the output buffer that. Uh, feeds into the DIC output and uh, that would be this point on the analog part uh, on the analog part uh, it would be those points Oh, I also forgot uh, to mark the capacitances. <laughs> anyway, that's a mighty interesting device. So it might be the time to put some covers uh, back on it. This is the bottom one, this is the top one. For the reason that I mentioned about the power transformer. Mm. 
That's mighty amount of discombobulation going on of this uh, workbench now. But... Yeah. Let's put those screws back in place and uh, then maybe I'll just fire this thing up. And you'll hear me playing guitar again. <laughs> Trying to play. <laughs> Seven screws for each cover. We'll be done with it real soon. I will also post uh, the schematics and some more info on Hackaday on on, uh, on the project site that I I just uh, created with I hope to preserve uh, the inner workings of uh, of this. Uh, Pretty magnificent device from the eighties. And uh, my my impressions uh, from working on it uh, I Frankly, I learned a lot. I uh, I really learned a lot uh, about uh, about uh, TTL and uh, CMOS uh, digital electronics, about uh, about triggers, about logic. Uh, this uh, this helped me to understand. Uh, how the counter ICs work, how the D triggers uh, work, and also uh, I also took a look at uh, random access memory, though I don't really understand uh, the inner workings of it, but. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty clever the the synchronization of uh, of the ram <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty clever in itself uh, like uh, like the whole process uh, uh, i took some notes uh, reading the data sheet of um, of the ram ICs and uh, the the whole process is uh, pretty interesting. So, gotta make some place. Let's switch the camera.
both put love or I can even put the power amplifier on overdrive. <laughs> shouldn't have the metal trash can the fresh metal can in front of the speaker that the volume parts only go to 8 it should go to 11 it really should if I designed it it would go to 11 Find it next time. Anyway, it will be time to get a move on with the Dirty Dozen project. I will still have to buy the potentiometers for that little amp. Because I still haven't. But... Next, uh, next video... I'll be making on the Dirty Dozen. It will not involve uh, potentiometers but because there's still a lot of things to do before even uh, making the preamp circuitry. As, uh, as a starting point I will use the AX84 high octane uh, preamplifier with uh, with some modded uh, slash custom uh, power amp, uh, I will uh, I will do a bunch of uh, other mods, uh, but uh, but generally I uh, I was going for the Marshall type uh, topology of uh, of this amp. Anyway. time.